Hello everyone, what is going on? My name is Sildris and today we are back again for another video and today guys I'm going to be teaching you how to make GFX art for Roblox and what I mean by that is those GFX effects that people have that look all fancy and cool and stuff and I'm going to be teaching you how to do that today. Um, I, I wouldn't know why you would want to use it for a cube necessarily but that's not the shape we'll be using. We're just going to be using a simple circle like most other people would. And then we're going to bring it over into Roblox so that I can show you guys how to properly use it and stuff like that. So the first thing we're going to do here in Blender is we're going to go ahead and delete this. So if you press X you can and hold X, you can just delete that. And then the next thing we're going to be doing is you want to make sure that your cursor, this thing right here, this little weird thing in the middle of the screen, you want to make sure it's at the center of this entire platform and everything. So you just want to click Control or shift s i mean i'm sorry about that and then you want to snap it to world origin and then it'll bring it to this place all right so the next thing you're going to do is press shift a you're going to go to mesh and you're going to use uv sphere all right and then what you're going to do is you're going to press tab you're going to right click and you're going to subdivide just one more time you don't you don't really want too many of these or else it'll mess it up but from here is where it gets tricky. So down here towards the bottom right is this object data properties. And all you want to do is click that. And then where it says vertex group, you're going to click this plus button. And that way it'll assign it to a group. And then what you're going to do is you're going to click assign. And that's all we have to do for this area. You don't have to worry about any of this stuff unless, of course, you know what you're doing. <clears throat> so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the wrench. We're going to add a modifier, all right? And we're going to add a vertex weight edit, all right? And then, of course, when you see where it says vertex group, you're going to click that. You're going to select the group. And then, of course, you're going to come down to fall off. You're going to click linear. And then you're going to click custom curve, all right? Pause if you need to. And we'll keep going on. So you're going to see this little dot here in the top corner of this fall off box and you're going to drag this one down. You're going to go to the other one and drag it up. All right. <clears throat> Simple as that. We can close that. We're done with it. Once you come over here to influence, you don't have to, you don't have to add this to a group or anything. You just want to click new. And then you see this little button here at the very end of max texture. You can click that. <clears throat> All right. And then when you select type, you're going to go ahead and click clouds and then we're done in this area as well you can go back to the wrench here on the task on this bar on this side and then you're going to choose the texture coordinates and you're going to click global all right okay so now what you're going to do is you're going to add a mask okay you're going to add a mask you're going to select the group all right so now what we need to do is not that okay i'm forgetting the key binds i'm sorry about that all right now that we have this all right so you want to make sure that not all the points are selected and as you see if we up this it'll make like this weird digital thing it'll start cutting certain blocks out and it makes it look really cool so you can usually split this threshold about half and half, but you don't want to go too much or else it won't look right. So we'll go about, yeah, we'll go, we'll go about 0.48, 0.486. And then you do not have to mess with that anymore. You can just go ahead and tap it up. And then we're going to add another modifier. We're going to add smooth down here in the deform column. All right. Once you add that, as you can see, it alters a little bit. And then we're just going to make this repeat factor about 20. All right, and you see it makes it look like this weird shape and all that. And then you don't really, you don't have to use this anymore unless you want to make this number larger and kind of make it look better. So we can go ahead and up that. And then we're going to go ahead and add another modifier. And then you're going to go into the deform section again and add a simple deform. Okay. And then in here, you can change this angle to whatever suits you but you want to make sure that you have this selected on the Z axis. And as you see, we're starting to bend this and making it look like a VFX. 
and as you see it's looking a little bit better and of course if you want to come back up to this threshold you can see that we can change the thickness and stuff depending on so we're going to make it about right there we're going to make it a little bit lower so then we have a little bit of thicker pieces especially with some of these being a little empty areas so we're going to probably keep it at that <clears throat> all right so now you have your vfx model and of course if you want to edit from here uh, what you want to do is you want to come up here to file you want to you want to click export and then export as a wavefront object file all right once you click that you're going to go ahead and make sure that you save it correctly make sure you save it as an obj file okay so we're going to name this uh, vfx ball all right and then we're going to put dot obj to make sure it saves properly and then we're going to click export object and now you have it saved to your file now of course now you can go over to your roblox studio and from here all you want to do is come up here to workspace you want to click this little white plus button beside it all right and then what you want to do is you want to type in mesh part okay and then what it does is it spawns in this little block here and this is how we will be getting our mesh into the game all right i'll let you, I'll let you take a pause here so then you can keep up i know i'm moving too fast through this problem but i want this to be a short video all right so now that we have our mesh part in here what we're going to do is we're going to select it and as you see here, it says Mesh ID here in the Properties tab in Appearance. And you're just going to click this little yellow folder right beside it. All right. And then you're going to come over to your file, whichever one you had made. And then you're just going to open that. Now, it might disappear. But as you see, we just move this over here. And pull it up a little bit. We have our small little VFX ball. Now... You can make this bigger, so you don't have to worry about that. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do this. We're gonna get a sphere from the part, and then we're gonna scale this a bit to make it look, to make it actually fit this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this part, let's make it a giant fireball. How about that? All right, so we're gonna make it neon orange, make it neon like this, and then from here, all we need to do is just adjust this to fit that one, okay? So as you see, you can scale it. It's a little bit weird to scale and you, and you might, it might take you some time to do this, but eventually you'll be able to get the proper scaling for it and stuff like that. So from here, we're just going to wrap it around it like this and pull it over just a bit. All right. So now typically you want this to be pretty snug against the ball to make the, to make it have the best quality. So you just want it a little bit above it like this. You just want to make it nice and snug. Make sure it's not phasing into the part at all. Now, it might take you a bit to do this. So make sure to take your time and make it look nice. All right, and as you see, it's wrapped up around the ball as so. We're going to bring this side in just a tad bit more. All right, as you see, we have it wrapped around the ball as so. Now, typically, um, lighter colors and lighter colors do not mix well when they are placed like this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this a darker ball just because for the sake of video. And of course you can make this whatever color you want. You know what, in fact, we're gonna go, in fact, we're gonna go ahead and make the color of this ball blue. All right, we're gonna make a nice, cool looking spirit bomb. How about that? All right, so that's a perfect blight, blight, bright blue, I can't speak. Looks pretty good on this. All right, so we're just gonna make this white. And then we're going to make sure that the material is neon. All right. Now look at that. Doesn't that look amazing? All right. So now if you are worried about gaps, all you want to do is click on it, click control D and then go over here to your rotate tool and just rotate it slightly. And you can adjust it like this and add more if you're worried about the empty spaces and stuff like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make this a different blue color. All right. Now check that out. looks pretty cool. 
Now, usually lighter colors and lighter colors do not mix well. I have a few other examples over here that these mix pretty well and these also mix very well. And so colors do matter. And then I also have this and I could always, I'm going to probably make a video on one of these later. If you guys want me to just mention that down in the comments, but, <clears throat> but this is basically how you have this as such and you have the uh, proper things. Now we could probably add a script and rotate these, but I won't be doing that in this video. So we're just we're gonna make one more. All right, we're gonna make one more, and then we're gonna make this one dark blue, just because I feel like it. All right. So as you can see, you can always make another mesh and uh, tack it in here, but I typically just duplicate them and kind of mess around with them, like this. If I can't select the white one, but um, you guys can just kind of fidget fidget around with it and make it look all nice and we're going to rotate this one like this as you see we have that nice really cool wrapped around feel so that's pretty much it for this video guys i hope you found it helpful and i will be making more videos like this with meshes and stuff in blender and this is just as much as a learning process as it is for me and i just want to spread it and i'm sure there's plenty of other videos of people explaining it but this is just a full process of how you get to vfx roblox and stuff like that so i hope you guys found this video helpful and i will see you in the next one peace